Macy's now going to sell several floors of its Chicago store to Brookfield, all a part of a deal that had been in the works for some time. So what does this tell us about the brick and mortar future for this particular company and the value of some of its retail real estate assets? First of all, Macy's looks good today, but in, in the longer picture, in the bigger picture of Macy's, it's got a long way to go to fix itself in the chart as far as I'm concerned. The only good thing about today for Macy's is that it did gap up. It's having a strong day, and it's starting out the year strong, which typically retailers have, if they call it Black Friday, which happens in November, but typically retailers are down most of the year until the holiday season. So the fact that Macy's is starting out this first quarter of 2018 strong is a good sign for the stock. But it's not a buy for me a long term until it gets over 43, 44, 45. And it could make that move this year. I don't know. I think tax reform is going to help a lot of these, a lot of these companies. Now, the fact that they're changing some things and they had the good earnings, like I said, it could go either way. The stock could drop after a rally for a week after these earnings because it's not a buy for me in the long term until it gets over that number 43. But overall, it is a positive sign for the stock that it's starting the year out green because most retailers are in the black all, are in the red all year until Black Friday, and then they scoop around at the end of the year once the holiday season starts, okay, which is so a long way away. Yeah, we see the gap up here on the chart that we just showed not too long ago, of course, up 12% today. And if we look back at a daily chart, actually, which we can pull up, this would be a longer term chart. We can see what Melissa was talking about there in terms of it's, there has been some weakness over time, but again, gapping up today. Melissa Gonzalez, we want you to weigh in here as well. We're seeing, generally speaking, all of these department stores rise this morning. For you, does this Macy's report portend anything that could be long lasting, I guess, here in the future? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would have to agree with Melissa. I have mixed feelings. Uh, you know, it's definitely seen a nice correction after being pummeled a bit in December. Um, it is a good sign that the strength they saw in the fourth quarter continued into January. And I have to admit, the last time I was into Macy's about a week ago, it was packed uh, on, on a Tuesday morning. Um, but, you know, I think overall, they're still saying sale, same store sales to be flat for the year. So I think, you know, we're seeing these revisions happening and now they're maybe beating a little bit of those expectations. But we'd like to... I'd like to see a little bit more how it flows out to the rest of the year. Some things I'm excited about is, you know, their disciplined approach to promotion. I think a lot of department stores are taking that tactic and not trying to win on discount, 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 which kills your margins. Um, they're doing a good job in, in focusing on their e-commerce business, too. They're still a leader um, in market share in that aspect. Um, so I, I think that if they can continue to improve their e-commerce delivery and also bringing in mobile checkout to their in-store experience, I think that there's a lot of things that they're working on initiative-wise to continue uh, improving the company. On our trade station platform here, we have, of course, the matrix feature highlighted, and viewers can gauge a sense of the demand and supply here that we're seeing, of course, after this company did report earnings. You see that in real time populating on the left side of the screen with demand, of course, on one side and then bid on the other. Melissa Gonzalez, I want to stick with you because your expertise is in that in-store bricks-and-mortar retail experience. You advise companies at the Lioness Group uh, on how to create pop-up experiences. So if you were advising Macy's, how can they leverage the brick-and-mortar locations that they have to create unique experiences that would actually help them compete with what e-commerce companies can't offer. Right. I mean, the more that they can they can really focus on delivering to what your point is an experience. You know, I went to visit their their market pop up that they originally announced earlier this year that just opened a couple of weeks ago, and I have to say I was a little disappointed. I think a lot of the department stores are still focusing on the product, and what differentiates is when you're focused on the brand story and making it immersive. Um, they have an interesting approach by having you know Beta there as a pop in, and now Macy's the market. But really, if they could bring in more events and if they could really make it very experiential, um, I think that that will help. I think that the more that they leverage the fact that their beauty counters, for example, they're doing more of those tutorials and helping me find the perfect match for my skin and things that I can't do online, the more and more that they push their retailers within their department stores to do that, the better. I think it's going to help a bit that they're mixing up their real estate portfolio with Brookfield and opening up office space, kind of like you saw Lord & Taylor did with WeWork. But if they want to survive in the retail market, I think they're going to really have to carve out more of those experiential aspects.
Melissa Armo. Well, they, they, they do yeah. the flower show. I want to say that Melissa was talking about the experience. They do the flower show and the spring flower show. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. I forget if it's just orchids or spring flowers. They always, I always go to that. That's one of the good exactly. things they do. Exactly, and, and that should be spring. year round. Yeah, yeah, and they need to do that yeah. year round, not just like once or twice a year. They need to keep people coming in on back. Yeah. Melissa Armo and Melissa Gonzalez just talked about uh, what Lord and Taylor did with WeWork. And one element that we haven't talked about yet is just the shift that we're seeing in the real estate industry as these department stores sell some of these assets. How do you think this changes the overall retail landscape when these companies no longer own uh, the stores and the real estate that they operate in? Well, I think that it probably would be better for them not to own the real estate because it's so expensive. And they can sign a lease then and just get out from under it if it's not working, rather than to worry about selling the real estate and hanging on to it. And it's very expensive to buy real estate, especially in a place like New York City. And I will tell you, the, the people that own the real estate in New York are those big, big companies. I can't think of any right now, but they own you know a huge portion of real estate in New York. You just rent from them. You just sign a commercial lease for 10 years, and if it works out, you stay. If it doesn't, he doesn't. And a lot of these companies, they shouldn't be buying the real estate, I don't think. I don't think it helps them to buy the real estate. That's probably why one of the reasons why they dump some of it. It's better if they just sign the leases, and if it's working, it's working. If it's not, it's not. I'm just looking right here on Amazon. It's at new highs right now, the second, as we're talking. These stores have to compete online. It, the goal is getting them in the door, but eventually, if they can't get enough people in the door, they're going to have to find ways to better compete online. And I don't know how to do that. Again, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not a retail company, but these, these companies, maybe Melissa could speak to this, they've got to find a better way to market themselves online because if Amazon keeps, you know, jumping up and up and up and up and up, you know, they're going to have to sell more real estate or stop leasing as many spaces and get into the online game more. That means social media, marketing to clients better through social media, making social media more interactive, all those things, Facebook, all of them. Melissa yeah, Gonzalez. I think, yeah, yeah well, sorry. Wait. No, it's okay. Weigh in here. Of course, we're looking at an Amazon chart and it's right near all time highs. So, get way in here and, and respond to our, <laughs> no, to our to other Melissa. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, to the point, I mean, I think you see more of the combination of these traditional brick and mortars with those digital natives bringing them into brick and mortar. Those strategic alliances are helping a lot. And if you look at one of Macy's comps, Kohl's, I mean, that's been a thing that's been great in their in their collaboration with Amazon, right? They, they're they opening up some of their store space to allow Amazon to sell products. They're powering returns for Amazon. So you're, you're, you're giving another reason to drive traffic into to your department store and then when people return the Amazon products and they got a little more cash in their product hopefully then you're converting them to a sale um, and so I think the more collaboration you're going to see in that sense it's not just with the department stores I mean you're even seeing that with the mall operators and real estate bringing in these digital natives putting down big bets and signage and letting people know hey we are current we do have the hottest brands online come touch feel and experiment with them in person and you know I think it makes a lot of sense to unlock some of these larger foot print um, properties because stores don't need as big of a footprint. Scaling down to a smaller footprint makes you more disciplined on inventory um, and you can do drop ship. So if you open up that space for that touch feel rich experience and then leverage the benefits of online, I mean that's the mix that a lot of these department stores and retailers need to continue to invest in. Ladies, I feel like we could talk retail all day long. Unfortunately, we got to let both of you go, but we really appreciate it here. Of course, Melissa Gonzalez, the CEO and founder of the Linus Group, and Melissa Armo, the founder of the Stock Swoosh as well. Thanks again.